Uh, for some of the other stories that we'll be talking about through today, 17 minutes past five, we've got Charles Amos with us, Young Voices UK contributor and leader of the opposition on East Grinstead Town Council, where he sits as an independent. Charles, good morning. Thank you very much for having me. It's our pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Right, let us start then with uh, this idea that's the front page of the Times this morning. Covid jab needed to enter pubs. Uh, so Boris Johnson hinting that landlords will be given new powers. Uh, it might be down to them to decide if they want to uh, to check, to check somebody's Covid status, their vaccine status. And this feels like a good idea, doesn't it? So that we all know we're walking into a, a safe environment once restrictions ease. Well, absolutely. And I, I particularly like the fact that it's voluntary. It's up to the landlord. And in my view, that would mean that you'd have some pubs that would require a vaccine certificate and you'd have other pubs that wouldn't. So those who wanted to be in a very safe pub would go to the one that required the certificate and those that weren't too concerned could go to the one that didn't require the certificate. So I think this is a fantastic policy from Boris Johnson. A very liberal, you could even argue, actually it is, a libertarian policy actually. Mm, interesting. And it kind of it kind of follows on uh, from his uh, sort of suggestions in a way around, um, uh, around care homes. Uh, when he backed care homes managers uh, who insisted on staff taking the vaccine. So I guess I'm just trying to place where Boris Johnson sits in all of this, on, on, on whether vaccine should be compulsory, potentially in the context of care home staff, whether we're all going to need to prove our own status to get into places like pubs, and you could see an extension of that quite easily, couldn't you, to theatres and elsewhere. I'm just trying to just trying to pin down exactly where he stands on, on our, our, our sort of health status going forward. Well, I think he's being um, somewhat inconsistent in requiring or potentially requiring care home staff to get a, a vaccine and making that compulsory and also allowing pub landlords to not require a vaccine. And I think he really ought to make it voluntary for care homes to require or not require a vaccine. I think most would and would sensibly require a vaccine, but I think that it should ultimately be up to the care home staff, particularly given the fact that if a great number of these care home workers leave care homes, that's going to mean far fewer workers and that is going to mean higher wages, which will mean there's less care for individuals who are within care at the moment. Mm. Just on the, on the pub's point then, just on the idea that it could be voluntary, so there's this kind of you know differing system between, you know, you go to one pub and then the one next door requires something different. You either need a passport or you don't. Um, Steve Baker from the COVID Recovery Group of Conservative MPs um, is warning that it could end up creating a two-tier society in which people who couldn't have the vaccine, for example pregnant women, would be excluded. Um, and other groups as well. Young people are way down the list of, of in terms of the vaccine rollout, so they won't be able to prove their vaccine status for months to come. So what, what, in, in terms of making it voluntary and in terms of kind of separating out the groups who have been vaccinated and not, is, is there an inherent unfairness in that somewhere? Um, no, I don't think there is. And I think Steve Baker, who claims to be a libertarian, is actually wrong on this. Any self-respecting libertarian would leave it up to the private property owners to determine whether or not they wish to increase the risk level to their customers. And I'm all in favour mm. of a two-tier society in this regard. I don't see why people shouldn't be able to separate according to their risk level. Now, it's unfortunate most unfortunate that pregnant women won't be able to go into their preferred pub because they can't get the vaccine because the government is not allowing them to get the vaccine but then this whole situation is unfortunate and so some people are going to have to opt for a suboptimum preference, I'm afraid. Mm, interesting. Uh, let's go on to another story that's, that's definitely interesting this morning as well. NHS staff in Scotland to be offered a 4% pay rise. Uh, notable because uh, the, the start of the government's process for, for looking at NHS pay in England has suggested a 1% pay rise uh, for staff in England. Um, but the Health Secretary in Scotland, Jean Freeman, said the average pay of a frontline NHS nurse would rise by over £1,200 a year, which is notable. Um, and it's yet another sort of description isn't it between the Westminster government and the government in at Holyrood in Scotland uh, and how they're deciding to uh, reward staff who've been on the front line over the course of this pandemic well I think it's a very good election promise um, that is certainly true but I do think Nicola Sturgeon is ripping off the English taxpayer if you look at Scotland's net fiscal deficit before this pandemic began it was about nine percent and that compares to three percent in the UK the only way Scotland is able to finance public expenditure per, per, per head in Scotland of about 
14,800 pounds compared to uh, about 1,200 pounds in England is by getting significant tax revenues from the English taxpayer and then spending that in Scotland. And this is another example of the English taxpayer being fleeced to support Scottish freebies, or in this case, a nurse's pay rise, which everybody would like to see, of course, and I would certainly like to see it. But given the fact that this country is in £2.1 trillion pounds of debt, I simply don't think it's affordable at the moment. And I think the Chancellor's proposal in England for a 1% pay rise is far, far, far more prudent. And that's exactly what we need at the moment. Interesting to describe it as fleecing English taxpayers, when in fact this will cost English taxpayers not a penny more than normal. This is the Scottish government deciding how to spend the money that it gets. And, and that's the bottom line. So it's, it's not fleecing, it's, it's them allocating budget and allocating resources they see fit. And they see fit to reward NHS staff in a way that the Westminster government and Boris Johnson apparently does not. Well, I would disagree with that. Primarily because of the fact that the English taxpayer pays substantially more to Scottish pet taxpayers through the Barnet formula. If you look at Scotland's public spending per person, it's £14,800, and they only raise about £1,200 in taxation. And research from the Taxpayers Alliance found that if they were to become independent, they'd have to double their rate of income tax. So I think it's very clear that the only way they can sustain this level of public expenditure, including the nurses' proposed pay rise, is by taking substantial funds from England and primarily from London and the South East for that matter. Uh, one final story to mention with you uh, as well this morning then, Charles. Ministers ordering uh, government departments to fly the Union flag, the Union Jack, every day, uh, quote, as a proud reminder of our history and the ties that bind us. Uh, all of out and the culture secretary said this would apply all year round except on days when another uh, flag was being flown such as the saltar on st andrew's day or the cornish flag on st Pyrrhon's day etc etc now I, I i mean this sort of sudden surge in in enthusiasm for flying the union jack the union flag over the last couple of weeks has been has been notable do you think it's important that, that it flies above government buildings Yes, I think it is important. I think given we have a Conservative government in place which is committed to the Union, it is fantastic that they're thinking of raising the Union flag and also the other flags of the nation on respective days. And I think people like looking up at the Union flag. It's a wonderful flag. It's got red, white and blue in there and they're some of my favourite colours and I think they're the favourite colours of a number of other people so I think it's good to have it up there. Yes. Mm, interesting. Uh, Charles, thank you very much. Thanks for your thoughts this morning. Uh, nice to speak to you, Charles Amos, Young Voices UK contributor, uh, joining us on Early Breakfast on Times Radio.